Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and today's video is just a sit down and chat kind of video. We haven't done one of those in a while on my channel, so yay. So let's get started with the title of this video. Am I an animal hoarder and am I quitting? So first of all, the reason why I'm making this video is because I have received a comment on one of my older videos recently saying basically that they were concerned that I was keeping so many of my chinchillas and the fact that I had a large number of chinchillas and the fact that some people turn into animal hoarders. Now, to be completely honest and frank with you, I don't mind getting comments like this. I think it's good to question people when you have concerns. However, this person probably wasn't aware that I'm a chinchilla breeder and I've been breeding chinchillas for a very, very long time and probably came across my video without really any context. Now, in terms of chinchilla breeders in the UK, I am actually a fairly small breeder. Some of the larger breeders have much, much, much more chinchillas than me. And to the point where that kind of scares me. So the amount of chinchillas that some breeders have actually scares the living daylights out of me because I know what my limits are. I know how many I can actually care for. I know some chinchilla breeders in the UK with an excess of over 200 chinchillas, which to me just frightens the life out of me. There is no way that I could look after that many chinchillas ever. So that getting started first. So I am a relatively small breeder. Let's get started on what is an animal hoarder because I feel like this term is thrown around far too freely. Animal hoarding is actually a mental disorder which is why I feel like it's thrown around a bit too freely when many people have just got a lot of pets and are not animal hoarders at all because it is a mental illness and a very 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 sad mental illness as well and it is quite serious. So yeah, so let's get into what is an animal hoarder. So an animal hoarder is someone that has an unusual amount of animals, which tick, I do, and fails to provide the basic nutrition, sanitation and veterinary care for the animals. That's the first part of the definition. Now for me, my chinchillas never ever run out of food. They always have good quality pellets. I actually buy it in bulk. So I will buy 10 sacks of chinchilla pellets in one go, which lasts me about two months. And I also buy my hay in bulk online. And I also buy my dust in bulk, so I have big sacks of chinchilla dust. So my chinchillas are never without their food and I always provide them with water every day. So next one is sanitation. So we do a deep clean on our chinchilla cages twice a week and in between time every day we do spot cleaning. Next one is not being able to provide veterinary care for your chinchilla. Now, I will say that my chinchillas don't get yearly checkups with the vets. And the reason for this isn't because I couldn't afford to do it, it's because chinchillas get stressed extremely easily. And it's not worth putting a chinchilla through stress if they're not, in fact, ill. So if any of my chinchillas are unwell or ill for any reason, they see a vet. Now, no shade to some content creators, but I am never, ever, ever going to be a content creator that does this ever. And that is set up a GoFundMe for vet bills. Because I believe that if you have animals in your care, you should be able to provide 
the necessary veterinary care for your animals without having to rely on other people to donate money so for example i have seen with some bigger creators that they've set up they've set up gofundmes when their animals got sick and it's been like a ongoing illness and that is just something that i would never ever do i have funds available to me should any of my chinchillas become ill and you will see that in a video shortly because I have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on vet bills over the years. So the second part of the definition is someone that fails to act on deteriorating conditions. So for example, which can lead to things like disease, starvation and death. Now, with me, I'm always looking at improving my setups. For example, I built my chickens a whole new chicken coop because I knew that they needed it. So next year I'm actually looking at possibly replacing all my breeding cages as well. So I'm always looking at things that can make my chinchillas have a better life and my animals in general have a better life. So whether that be a new chicken coop, new cages. So the next part of this is someone that also fails to act on environmental um, conditions of the animals. So for example, severe overcrowding and sanitary conditions. I currently have about 10 empty breeding cages and that is so that I can separate a chinchilla if I needed to or if there's an emergency I have spare cages available. It's never a case of oh my gosh I've run out of space for them. Now I do know of some breeders that do run out of space regularly and I know one breeder that ran out of space quite often and she would actually put her chinchillas in hamster cages because she'd run out of cage space and then she'd ask other breeders to take on some of her animals for a little while because she had no space left. Now that would indicate to me there's a problem there. I'd be looking at starting to rehome my chinchillas if it got to that stage. So the next definition is being unaware of the negative effects your collection of animals has on your family, your well-being and your health in general. Now this is really just not an issue for me, I have no health issues and neither do any of my family from my chinchillas. For us we do keep them clean and tidy. The only issue that I have is the amount of dust that we get in the house because you know when, it, when you've got chinchillas they do have to roll in dust which is a pain. So I'm constantly having to dust and if I do if I dust one day, it so quickly becomes dirty again. That's the only thing I would say. Um, but that's the same if anyone has a chinchilla, they will experience that. So yeah. Now with regards to this comment, I do actually appreciate this comment because I do recognise how quickly something can go south. I personally have first hand experience of how something that started well can end very, very, very badly. So now, a little bit of a story time. Many, many years ago, I bought a brown velvet off a breeder that uh, lived about an hour and a half away from me. And I went there, they had about a similar amount of chinchillas to us, and their setup was very, very, very similar to us. And all the chinchillas looked really healthy, really good condition, and we ended up buying one of her chinchillas. Roll it forward a few years later, I was on a classified ads website, um, pre-loved, and I was scrolling through and I saw the same breeder saying that due to change in personal circumstances, they were having to sell their entire herd. And I thought to myself, I know she has a lot of really, really, really nice chinchillas. So I got in touch with her and I said, look, I said, what have you got available? I'd be really interested in having a look and to see if I could buy some. And she said, that's fine. She said, the reason why she was selling her herd was because of a breakdown in her relationship. And that um, currently, the chinchillas weren't being looked after at her house. They were at her friend's house. So basically, the woman was saying these, these chinchillas were being looked after at her friend's house rather than her house. They'd been moved. So I was just like, great, that's fine. So she gave us her friend's address. So the day that we went to go see the chinchillas, it was an extremely cold day. It was minus 12 degrees the night before, and that is extremely cold for the UK. So I remember us driving to this person's house, and we got there, and her friend opened the door, and this friend was extremely unkept, I have to say that. 
and we walked in we were discussing the chinchillas and the man said to us this guy said to us that he absolutely couldn't stand chinchillas he hated looking after them and he said he'd been looking after them for just like a couple of weeks and he couldn't stand it and I was like oh, okay that sounds interesting why has this person left her chinchillas with someone that really doesn't like chinchillas and uh, then we went into the kitchen and there was a cage with two chinchillas in it um, a white violet and a violet and a baby chinchilla now these chinchillas look like they hadn't had a dust bath in months and months they didn't have any food and they didn't have any water and there was a little tiny baby in there with them so he said to us oh these ones aren't for sale I am keeping these ones because they're more valuable and they are more valuable but I said to the guy you know was the mum and dad separated when the kit was born because if not the chinchilla's going to be pregnant again probably and he just looked at me like I was mad and I said have you provided them any kind of dust baths and he said what and I went dust baths they need to roll in dust to get clean and he looked at me like I had just fell off of a spaceship it was really quite worrying he had no clue about dust baths at all the chinchilla had very little food or water and I had a sinking feeling in my stomach and I said well where are the rest of the chinchillas then and he went they're out the back so he walked across we went outside the back and they were and we walked to his garage so he went to his garage and it was like a mechanics workshop it was car bits all over the place car every, cars everywhere the smell of petrol and oil was quite horrific in there and then on one side there were chinchilla cages Now these chinchilla cages were stacked on top of each other all higgledy piggledy so like that like just junk stacked on top of each other and multiple there was multiple chinchillas in every single cage the chinchillas had no food no water some of the chinchillas didn't have even have the trays at the bottom of the cages so they were literally just peeing on the other chinchillas and they looked insanely dreadful they just looked dreadful and I've never seen conditions so bad in my life all the chinchillas looked unwell they all had greasy greasy fur they hadn't had dust baths in a long long time and the smell was horrendous as well now bearing in mind he'd only taken on these chinchillas two weeks ago these conditions were going bad for a long, long time. Now, so in the end, we were looking for specific chinchillas, but once we got there, I just looked around the cages and I ended up picking out the chinchillas that looked the worst. I ended up going home with two standard greys, a beige and a white, because they were the ones that looked in the worst condition. And he said to me, oh, you need the cages as well. You need to take the cages as well. So I was just like, I really don't want these cages but okay fair enough I don't want to argue with him anyway so one of the cages did actually have the metal trays at the bottom and the metal tray was in fact orange dark orange where it had been saturated in urine for so long and when you touched it bearing in mind this is galvanized steel when you touched it the whole thing kind of like fell apart and just dissolved because it had been saturated in urine for such a long time it was actually disintegrating in front of us the smell was horrendous I remember getting the getting the chinchillas home and immediately taking them out of those cages and put them in another cage and we dust bathed them so we loaded them in the car and quite literally I sat in the car and I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed because I wanted to take them all and my husband was just like we cannot take them all. We haven't got room for them all. We can't, we can't do it. And I literally cried and cried and cried to the point where I actually called the RSPCA when I got home just to let them know that what was going on there. So that is how quickly things can change. A breeder can be really, really, really good and then it can nosedive if something was to go wrong. 
And that is the day that I decided that I would never, ever, ever put my chinchillas through that. If for any reason something went wrong in my life and the chinchillas care wasn't up to standard, I would rehome my animals before it got anywhere near the stage that this woman had let her chinchillas get into. This is why I appreciate this comment is because, yes, things can go downhill very, very quickly when you have a lot of animals. That is why you have to realise that when things do go wrong, you need to do something to fix it, whether it means rehoming your animals or rethinking the situation. So anyway, yes, yeah, so I don't blame this commenter at all for a comment, but I just wanted to make it clear that I don't believe that I am an animal hoarder, and I th hope I've explained why I don't believe I'm an animal hoarder. Getting now onto am I quitting? Now, no, I'm not quitting YouTube. I do actually love making YouTube videos, and I am not quitting as in I'm not rehoming any of my animals or anything like that. Um, but I am deciding that in the next few years, I probably am going to be drastically reducing the amount of chinchillas I have breeding. Just because it's come to the point in my life now where I'm thinking, do I really want to continue to have as many kits as I am having now? And the answer is probably not. So you will still see baby chinchillas from me, no doubt about it, but you probably won't see as many or, you know, as frequently. You probably just won't see as many and I probably won't have as many to sell. But I actually started this year with actually reducing the amount of kits I have born. For example, I gave my chinchillas a long break last year and consequently I had no chinchillas born in January, February and March. So it was quite nice not to have chinchillas born in January, February and March. So yeah, so hopefully I am going to still be breeding chinchillas, just not as many. So I know this video has been a little bit different for me and I just wanted to address it because there may be other people that feel the same way as this lady and I want to kind of uh, reassure you that if anything did change and my standards of care did go down I would be looking at rehoming my chinchillas I have no qualms about doing that if my standards of care were to decrease I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one very 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 soon goodbye for now goodbye <laughs>